Are you looking for the ultimate sports experience? Well, look no further. My name is Jake Masucci, and I host a podcast called Jake's Takes. I am currently a sophomore at Oakland University and am a student manager with the men's basketball program. I started this sports podcast about six months ago, and I fell in love. I've been covering NFL, college football, and NBA and going super in depth with it. I bring on a lot of guests to talk about each sport that they're passionate about. I've even covered some hockey, some baseball. We even dove into some Marvel comics, which was super fun. So this podcast covers a lot and I've really been enjoying myself. We come out Mondays every week and we'll even sprinkle in some weekdays. We'll, we'll be on Wednesdays sometimes, we'll be on Thursdays sometimes, we'll be on Friday. So sprinkling in every once in a while. The podcast is available on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast. And we also have a great YouTube going up. So subscribe to the Spotify, subscribe to YouTube, do whatever you got to do to support the channel. And I really appreciate it. And I'll hopefully see you guys on the next episode of Jake's Takes. But enjoy listening to Giovanni. Peace. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Joe Mo Show, right here in 88.3 FM WXOU, Auburn Hills, Michigan, Oakland University, and all your wonderful station identification features. I am your host and sports media director of WXOU, Giovanni Mosheri, and the Joe Mo Show is your home for all Oakland University sports and beyond on 88.3 FM. Don't forget to follow WXOU and our MAB award-winning social media platforms, including Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Be sure to join the WXOU Discord server and find all of your information on the station at WXOU.org. And don't forget to follow me on social media as well. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on TikTok. The Joe Mo Show has its own Instagram page as well. You can follow that at the G-I-O-M-O Show. So be sure to follow that. Stay up to date with the show, what we're covering, some sneak peeks at interviews, etc. That is the place to be. Another place to be if you're not with me right now on 88.3 FM here Thursday at 6 o'clock, then you can find me at any time on YouTube and Spotify. That is also the place to be for the Jomo Show. And like usual, we got a lot to cover for this week. I'm starting to, I'm getting close to biting off more than I can chew, but we're still chewing fine. We got your club sports update. We got esports and swim and dive. They're becoming a much more prominent section in the Oakland NCAA sports update with volleyball, men's and women's soccer included. We're going to go down NFL week five. The Lions blow the doors off of the Carolina Panthers, and we're going to talk about the rest of Week 5, some of the highlights, some of the surprises, and we're going to be doing my picks for this upcoming week live on air once again. That was a lot of fun to do last week, and honestly, I didn't do too bad last week doing them live. I got 9 out of the 14 games correct, so we're going to go for another hot streak for this week six of the NFL. And for this week's interview, you heard it on Instagram at the GIOMO show. I post about it before the show. We got for this week's interview the one and only director of basketball operations for men's basketball, one of the most passionate Golden Grizzlies that I have met and talked to on the show. It is Colin Shannon. It's going to be this week's interview on the Jomo show. And judging by how much we got to cover for the main show, does not look like we're going to be given or going to be getting a lot of time to play that for you live. Thus, like I said before, the place to be is YouTube and Spotify. You guys can go find that interview with Colin Shannon coming up right after the show on YouTube and Spotify. And for announcements for WXOU, currently, right now, like this second, I'm talking. It's already been going on for officially for five minutes now. It is Hispanic Heritage Night here at WXOU. We got bingo. We got music. We got food. We got live performances by fantastic artists. And you guys got to be there to see it. Come down to the Habitat, down to the OC. Wave hi to me at WXOU, but be sure to get down to Hispanic Heritage Night Hosted by WXOU. In other WXOU news, this is homecoming weekend coming up. And WXOU has got plenty of sports to help you guys get through the homecoming weekend. Friday is volleyball at 6 p.m. 
against Milwaukee. We got Joey and Gavin on the call. Harsh is going to be in studio. That's Friday the 13th. Ooh, scary. Saturday the 14th, very busy day. Men's soccer, they kick off the sporting festivities. Saturday, 1 o'clock against Wright State. We got Gavin and John on the call. In the middle of the day, Saturday, 4 p.m., volleyball against Green Bay. Does not look like we have plans to cover that just because of how packed this Saturday is going to be. So that one is going to have to be one that you go down to the arena and see yourself. That's going to be... I believe that is senior, that is, there's special events going on for this weekend. We'll get to it once we get to the volleyball segment. And then also Saturday, 7 p.m., club football against Loyola Chicago. I'm going to be on the call. Jake Masucci is going to be on the call. And Jacob Verasic is going to be on the call. We got three guys manning the call for that football game. Be sure to get down to the football field itself, right across the upper fields. The Elaine Lay Track and Field Complex, I believe it is officially called. But be sure to get down there. Get loud in the crowd yourself. But we're going to be here for you on WXOU if you can't make it for your Golden Grizzlies football. And then we're not done there. Sunday the 15th at 1 p.m. Women's soccer, they take on Green Bay. It's going to be me and Joey on the call. And then Tuesday, men's soccer will be taking on Louisville. Tuesday, 7 p.m., Gavin and Harge on the call. So we got plenty of sports for you coming up on WXOU. I'm going to be featured in some of the games, but be sure to get down to the arena or tune in to WXOU for your Golden Grizzly sports. And before we go any further with your club sports update, with your NCAA Oakland sports update, with your NFL coverage, with your live picks, with the interview, before all that, we got to talk about Bart's Pizza. You know how we do it. Bart Basilico reinvented his father's pizzeria business by putting it on wheels. That means a pizza food truck, baby. Bart and his wife, Lauren, travel all around Metro Detroit, cooking up homemade pies made fresh to order in their four-layered pizza oven on wheels. You can find them on their website at eatbartspizza.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Bart's Pizza. His last name is literally Basil. Basilico, Basil, that's how you know that he knows what he's doing in the kitchen. So be sure to stop by Bart's Pizza, go to his website, find his schedule, and grab a cannoli while you're there as well. It's Bart's Pizza. It's too good. All right, let's get right into your Oakland Club Sports Update. And like I like to say before all the, any of these segments, there's 30 club sports teams here at Oakland University by, or hosted by or through the... University Recreation and Well-Being. There's 30 of them. I can't get to all of them. And, you know, I only know what you guys put out there. So that's my kind of encouragement to get you guys to get your social media up to date, up and running, humming. So I only know what I can find. And if you want your club sport to be featured on the Joe Mo Show, if you got news, if you got scores, highlights, if you want to have an interview on the Joe Mo Show, I'm the place to be. DM me either... At the Joe Mo Show Instagram page, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's at the Giovanni Mo, my personal Instagram account, find me, DM me, email me, anything you need. I'm going to get you covered on the Joe Mo Show. And with that being said, let's get into some of those club sports. We mentioned club football. They got a game coming up this weekend against Loyola Chicago. It's been a rough season so far for the Golden Grizzlies. Losses to Ohio State, to Michigan State, and then most recently to Wright State. So the Golden Grizzlies are really looking for a bounce-back game. Loyola Chicago is going to be the place to be for that bounce-back, I am sure. D1 Club Hockey, the ACHA Club Hockey Team. They had a homestand. They they played against Duke. Duquesne. I really don't know how how to pronounce that. It's not Duquesne. I think it's Duquesne. They played two games at home at Suburban Ice Rochester against the Blue Devils, I think. I like I said, there's only so you can only know so much. But anyway, both of the games were the same score, unfortunately. Duquesne, they got the best of the Golden Grizzlies, four to two on October October sixth and October seventh. And you can check their website, oaklandhockey.org, for their upcoming games and schedules. You're going to be hearing more of them on WXOU as well. We got a hockey gang forming here at the station for your 
Club Hockey Goodness. So you can find all the recordings there on WXLU Sports' uh, YouTube channel. We got a specific spot for all of your sports, your full broadcasts, your highlights, your interviews. All that is going to be on WXOU Sports on YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe. We already got some great content on there. And we got some great content coming up as well. We'll talk about that with the NCAA segment. But we're still on the club segment here. So that is club hockey. Women's Club Lacrosse, you saw them last week on the Joe Mo Show. This past Sunday, they pl- had their play day against MSU, which is three games in one day. They played against Notre Dame. They played against Marquette and against Michigan State all in one wonderful day. So moving on to Women's Club Soccer, this past Sunday, they faced U of M Mays, finishing with the final score. It was a draw, one-to-one. You could go to their Instagram page to find out who were the MVPs of that game. Who gets the little plush golden grizzlies that they give out after every game? They get they give out two for our team. So be sure to go check out their Instagram and find out who's got it. Their next game will be tomorrow and Sunday against MSU and U of M Flint, respectively. So be sure to check them out. Get your information on your women's club soccer team. Men's Club Lacrosse, I saw them, they were practicing late last night, 10.30, I was walking by, saw them practicing, and I, you know, back-checked, or I went back and checked their schedule, I'm like, okay, this is them, they are practicing right now. So, you know, shout out to them, they, they, they put in the work late at night, like a lot of these club teams do, they can only, the best time they can get their practices is, you know, about, you know, late at night, up at the upper fields, either up in the dome, up at the football field, you know, they, they make it work and they put that work in. So be sure to check them out on Instagram as well. All these teams have an Instagram page. This is where we get a lot of the information. Club Hockey, they got a Twitter account, actually, so be sure to follow them as well. So that's where you're going to find your information on Club Sports. You're going to find them on their own Instagram pages. You can find highlights on the OU Recwell's Instagram page. You know, So be sure. you got All it takes is a quick search on Instagram. You just got to look up like Oakland Club Soccer, Oakland Club Women's Lacrosse. You'll find it eventually. So be sure to go follow them, get to know the staff, get to know everything about your club sports. Moving on, men's club volleyball. All the news I could get for this week was that they got new jerseys, and they look sweet. And they've been been about that action. They've been playing very often. They got a lot of clips coming out on Instagram as well, so be sure to check them out. Women's club volleyball, they were at a Grand Valley State-hosted tournament this past weekend. They got highlights of that on their Instagram page. Club softball, they got back from Elkhart Indy for their for the invitational tournament that they played in, even through the rain. You could go find highlights of that. And then finally, women's club rugby. You're going to be hearing from them soon on the Joe Mo Show. We got, we're getting the workings done to get them on the Joe Mo Show. They faced Bowling Green this past Saturday. Results I could not find. But they will face FSU on October 21st. So that is your Oakland Club Sports update. I got all that I could about our fantastic club teams. And I hope that this at least piques your interest. You go, you know, you could go find them on Instagram, on Twitter, you can find them on their own websites. You know, get involved, go watch some of the games, go cheer them on because look, I'll be real here. For club games, there's not a big audience. Football they get a good crowd. But you know, in hockey, they, they get a decent crowd too. But if you're there and you're passionate and you're wearing your black and gold and you're loud enough, you're going to be noticed and you're going to have an effect on the game. So I encourage you guys to go and watch them, follow, like, all that kind of stuff. You've seen me do all my promoting. So that's going to wrap it up for this Club Sports Update. And before we go to break, I got to tell you about the Eli Andrews Show. Thursdays at 10 p.m. on WXOU, just a few hours after the Jomo Show. We got late night here on WXOU. The FCC guidelines are lifted, so some hilarious goodness is to be had. Listen to Eli Sepulveda and Andrew Deacon. Ask their guests the wildest questions that they wrote for each other to ask. That means Eli Andrews asks Andrew's questions, and Andrew asks Eli's questions. So be sure to join in on the hilarity tonight at 10 p.m. right here on WXOU. We'll be right back with more The Joe Mo Show. Thank you, Batman, for tuning in to 88.3 FM, and thank you to everybody listening live right now. We're back here on The Joe Mo Show. I'm still your host, Giovanni Mosheri, and it's time for your Oakland NCAA sports update. And we got a lot to cover. Esports, swim and die, volleyball, men's soccer, women's soccer. We got plenty to get to. And you know what? Something just piqued my memory. 
Women's soccer, they are currently playing right now in Indianapolis against IUPUI. The game going on currently, right? I mean, like right now. And let me give you at least how the game is going right now. So far in the second half, we're at 49. We just started the second half. 49-38 is the... no, it's about the time listed on the live stats. Currently a draw one to one. Emma Antoine, which I think is how you pronounce it for IUPUI, scored the first goal pretty early in the game. Let me give you at least the time of scoring. In the twenty seventh minute, IUPUI was able to score. And then Oakland, they tie it up. In the forty ninth minute, that goal being attributed to Oh, man, I don't know the team well enough to get these names right, so please forgive me. I should know the names well, but Anuya Alui. I think I got it. Tied up the game in the 49th minute just recently, just a little bit ago, and now it's as if it's nil-nil. It's as if it's a fresh game. So we're going to keep up. We're going to keep some tabs on this game throughout the show, so I want to start it off with that. And while we're on the topic of women's soccer, why don't we go and talk about some more women's soccer, what they've been up to. So, like I mentioned, they're currently playing in IEPUI, but this past Sunday, October 8th, they were at Youngstown State for a 2-1 victory in the Horizon League on the road. In that game, in the first six minutes, Macy Waregna, who else? Scored on a penalty kick to get to kick off. Yeah, there you go. To get things started for the Golden Grizzlies. And then they stacked on another goal in the 28th minute. Also, Macy Waranga in uh, this one assisted by Olivia Darnell. Uh, would make it 2-0 going, or, you know, about halfway through the first half. So Oakland, they came out on top and they stayed on top. Uh, early in the second half, however, Youngstown State, they were able to get a goal of their own. Taylor Barry, um, assisted by Chloe Wheeland. Uh, that got the score to where it ended up staying 2-1 to one Oakland victory. So well done to them. Going back, going to now the Horizon League standings, at least uh, as of this afternoon. Oakland currently sits at the fifth spot in the Horizon League. With a conference record of 2-1-3. and three, With an overall record of 4-5-5. and five. And above them would be Wright State at 4, Robert Morris at 3, IUPUI at 2, and Milwaukee at 1. Milwaukee is a tough, tough soccer team. Let me tell you that. So some of their upcoming games. Like I mentioned, this Sunday, October 15th, they're going to be facing Green Bay, who currently sits at the bottom of the Horizon League, 0-5-1 in conference, just to put some uh, perspective on that. That's going to be a black and gold day, so be sure to be there. Show up and show out in your black and gold. I think that's what it means by black and gold day. And then Sunday the 21st, they're going to be playing Milwaukee here for Senior Day. That's going to be Saturday the 21st at 1 p.m. Be sure to go to goldengrizzlies.com for your information on all of your NCAA sports. So while we're on the topic of now soccer, let's go to the men's soccer team. So men's soccer, some news that came out during the week. I wanted to make sure I highlighted this. Mikey Ketterman, at least as of Wednesday, led or led or leads the Horizon League in total goals. He has six already on the season. And then also freshman Donovan Phillip. You saw him. We had an interview with him after the Michigan game. You know, he had a great game-winning goal off of a corner kick out the header against Michigan. We called that on WXOU. So anyway, Donovan Phillip, he also leads the league, or at least did as of Wednesday, with five assists. For the for overall, I'm trying to be specific with that when I got with the stats here. So in the overall stats of the Horizon League, as in that includes their out-of-conference games, Donovan Phillip leads with five assists, and Mikey Ketterman leads with six goals. But the reason I'm being specific about it is because Purdue-Fort Wayne, they played uh, recently, they played, I believe, last night after uh, so, the Golden Grizzly social media posted all about it. They got a 3-1 victory over UAB, I think. I'm not sure what the team is. They look like they're the Dragons. But they got a 3-1 victory there, so that kind of tallied up some of the goals there. But what I'm saying right now is if you take it week by week, this latest full week, Golden Grizzlies sit on top with goals and assists. So shout out to them. Just wanted to make sure that that news comes out. And speaking of Oakland, speaking of IUPUI, or excuse me, of Purdue-Fort Wayne, 
Oakland University this past Saturday, on October 7th, they were at the Mastodons. They were in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and they came back home with what? They came back home with a 2-1 victory over the Mastodons. The Mastodons, who are no, you know, no slouch in the Horizon League. Currently, they sit at second in the Horizon League standing. So that's no slouch for, you know, for sure. Mikey Ketterman had, or you don't let me get the box score up. I want to be sure that I am correct. I want to be sure that I get my details right. I know Mikey Ketterman scored in this one, but I want to make sure I'm accrediting properly. So excuse me while I go through goldengrizzies.com to make sure to get all the up-to-date and fantastic stats. So looking, that's right. We got Mikey Ketterman. I was right. He got not one but two goals in this away game against Purdue for Wayne for the 2-1 victory. So to kind of take you through score by score, 26th minute went to Seth Maumeister of Purdue for Wayne, who now currently leads in goals. And then in the 29th minute, and not far after, just about three minutes later, Mikey Ketterman said, uh-uh, I got this one, assisted by Jace Foster. And then in the 60th minute, with the game tied 1-1, Mikey, off of a penalty kick, with the chance to get the game-leading goal, oh, he got it, in the 60th minute. And there were a lot of cards, flo- there, were, there was a lot of laundry in this game, a lot of, uh, it was almost like an Uno game. All these car- a lot of cards going on. I'm not going to list everyone's names, but plenty of plenty of yellows, and there was a a red given to Purdue for Wayne. You know, just saying. I'm just reading the stats here. It's factual. So that was a 2-1 victory for the Golden Grizzlies at Purdue for Wayne. They then traveled to Kalamazoo to face the Western Michigan Broncos. Not the same vibe. Broncos have a very very good soccer team. Golden Grizzlies came back home with an o with a nil five loss, and in the words of head coach Eric Pogue on Twitter, he said, "You know, replying to the score, he said one of those tough days. Rest, recover, regroup, analyze, learn, grow, push forward. There's a lot. There's a lot to it, coach. I agree." And then he says, we go again Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. at home versus Wright State in a very important Horizon League matchup. And he's not wrong. That is very true. This Sunday, this, this Saturday, like I mentioned before with the WXLU broadcast, 14th for homecoming, 1 p.m. Oakland University takes on the Raiders of Wright State on Alumni Day. That's the special event for the homecoming. They bring the alumni home. They celebrate them and their legacy that they left here at Oakland University. And then following, or that following Tuesday, October 17th, the team stays at home and hosts Louisville, who are currently uh, nationally ranked number 13, I believe. Going to the Horizon League standings, IUPUI stands atop the Horizon League, 3 1 and 1 in conference, 5 5 and 3 overall. Purdue Fort Wayne, right underneath. Um, Purdue for Wayne, three and two in conference, no ties, six, four and one overall. And then right below is the Golden Grizzlies at three, also three and two in conference, four, six and two overall. So the Golden Grizzlies are up in the top three in in the you know, currently bronze in the Horizon League. And that means there's only two spots left before going for gold. So that's your women's soccer. That's your men's soccer. What else we got? Well, we got volleyball. And then later we got esports and swim and dive. But for volleyball, there was only one game that was played since the last time we covered them on the Jomo Show. That was Friday, October 6th. You heard it on WXOU. It was an awesome game. It was Dig for the Cure Day. It was National College Radio Day. And it was a fantastic game against Cleveland State in the arena. Golden Grizzlies finished with a 3-1 victory over Cleveland State. And they were, I mean, 3-1. You think, okay, Oakland, they, they mightily handled the Vikings. That may be so in the first set. Second set was a lot more contested. First set was 25-18. Second set was 27-25. So we got into extra points there in a win-by-two situation. Third set was for Cleveland State, 25-19. And then this one, the fourth set, the closing set, was exciting. 29-27. 
was the fi- was the final score of set four. You can hear it on WXOU Sports. We got the whole game up there on YouTube. We got the highlights. We got the last about eight minutes of set four, and it, and it got very exciting. We. Uh, I think the mic even cut out a couple of times, but it was just that tight. Volleyball is just that exciting and suspenseful. I love calling volleyball. I love watching it up close. I love being in the stands, screaming at the opposing team as they're about to serve. And when they hit the net, brother, that is, some, that is hilarious. I love doing that. But the Golden Grizzlies, they take a home victory on Dig for the Cure Day against Cleveland State 3-1. to one. Upcoming games. We talked about them for homecoming weekend. They got two home games for homecoming. Friday, tomorrow, October 13th. Friday the 13th. Ooh. Oakland University faces Milwaukee Friday at 6 p.m. You can hear that on WXOU. Then Saturday, October 14th, 4 p.m. Golden Grizzlies, they host Green Bay on Senior Day. Not on WXOU. So get down to the arena yourself. Go watch it with your own eyes. And going to the Horizon League standings, Oakland, they also stand at third in volleyball as well as they do in men's soccer. So who is above them in the Horizon League? Oakland's now 5-2 and two and 11-8 and eight overall, conference and overall, respectively. Who's above them? Well, none other than the two teams coming to visit the arena this weekend. Milwaukee's number one. They're 6-1 and 14-7 and and overall. Green Bay is also 6-1 and 8-11 and and overall. So the Golden Grizzlies, they have an opportunity to face two of the top teams, two of the teams in their way of first place in the Horizon League. So this is going to be exciting, high-stakes volleyball being played in the arena on WXOU and then also with your own eyes in the arena. It's going to be exciting. So that is your volleyball. Moving on now, we got eSports we got to cover here. And they did something new with their social media. I love this. But they released a what's going on, like kind of what's going on this weekend for esports. What are they doing? What are they playing? Who are they playing? What game? So they summarized it very nicely. On the tenth, it was Rocket League. They faced Fisher College. In that game, Golden Girls take a tough loss to their CRL season opener, or in their CRL season opener, that being College Rocket League, against. Fisher Sports GGs says their says their Twitter account at Oakland Esports. The Overwatch team they face Boise State. Oakland Esports Overwatch fell fell or excuse me Overwatch two and the, the game has been updated Overwatch two fell to Boise State or, or yes to Boise State Esports last night zero to three in our final game of the regular season GGs. I'm reading the tweet here. That was as of last night, so that was not last night, but the night before. Uh, we closed the regular season with a record of 5-1 and one and now look to the LCQ to earn a fall playoff spot. LCQ action begins this week, or begins the week of October 23rd. So it's going to be some exciting Overwatch 2 being played for the Golden Grizzlies. Smash Brothers, they had a bye week this past Tuesday the 10th, but... League of Legends, they played DeSalis University. I think that's how you pronounce it. In that game, the tweet reads, What a great start to the season. Oakland Esports League of Legends team secures a 2-0 victory over DeSalis Esports in the season opener, GG's. We'll be back on the RIT this Thursday for our matchup against Rochester University Esports. See you later. <coughs> Excuse me. And then some matchups coming up. Tonight, Smash Bros, they play they play Wayne State University, and then League of Legends, they play Rochester University. So what I just mentioned about you know, um, what I just mentioned about League of Legends playing Rochester, that's tonight. That's happening now. You guys should go to Oakland Twitch. Oh, or uh let me let me make sure I got this right. I believe it's Oakland Esports. On Twitch. Let me go and find it for sure. Because, you know, it sounds like I'm unprepared. But actually, I am simply demonstrating how easy it is to go and find your wonderful Oakland Esports. That is it. Twitch.tv slash Oakland Esports is where you can find all the action. I believe the stream starts in 30 minutes. 
uh, about 7 o'clock is usually when their matches start. And you might find me doing some interviews with some of the athletes at the start of the streams. Just saying. So be sure to tune in. Twitch.tv slash Oakland Esports. Moving on now. Swim and dive. I'm not sure if I covered this the first time I covered swim and dive, but preseason polls for the Horizon League came out on September 28th, so a few weeks ago. Women's swim and dive was preseason polled to be number one once again. The men, though, they're knocked down to number two, only underneath IUPUI. And if you remember the Horizon League, the Horizon League Championships meet, it was really close for the men against IUPUI. It came down to the last relay. The one or re- relays are worth more points than individual events. But that relay came down to the wire. Oakland needed it to win. And Oakland got it and won to keep the streak going. To keep the 40 plus year streak going of conference championships. So women are one, men are two. Some other news. In the meet against Miami of Ohio that occurred this past week. I believe it was, like, believe it was October 6th that Swim and Dive faced the Red Hawks. Yep, Friday, October 6th, 5 p.m., they faced Miami of Ohio. And Jordan Ships and Christian Bartz were named Horizon League Swimmers of the Week. Not only did we get it for women's, but we got it for men's as well. For Jordan, in the 200 Butterfly, she got second place with the time of 202.56. In the 100 Freestyle, Jordan Ships took gold. 51.53 is the time. In the 100 Butterfly, Jordan got first place again. 55.71 is the time. And then in the 400-yard Freestyle Relay, Oakland Women's took second place with Jordan Ships anchoring the relay. Final time for the relay was 327.78. So two firsts and two seconds. That's pretty good and worthy of Horizon League Swimmer of the Week. Christian Bart, on the other hand, for the men, swam the 200-yard medley relay. He was the second leg, and I believe that is, I believe that is breaststroke. For I, I haven't been swimming in a long time, but either way, he was the second leg of the 200-yard medley relay. That relay finished first place with a time of 130.16. He also swam in the 50 freestyle. First place with a time of 20.52. Oakland University actually got all three. Or got first, second, and third. Micah Schaefer and Charlie Brown got second and third, respectively. Man, these guys are fast, though. 20.52, if you're not familiar with swim, at least from my experience in high school. That is fast. That is insanely fast. We used to say back in the day... And I believe I could say this on air, but the the seniors on the swim team they used to have a catchphrase every time we would go out for a meet or we're in the locker room getting ready for a meet. The line was swim loose or swim loose, swim fast, kick some ass. So moving on, so Christian Bard he also swam in the 100 yard freestyle. He got first place, 45:27, and then the 400 yard freestyle relay. Bart anchored the relay and finished with the time. The relay finished with the time of 302.71 for first place. So Bart has finished in first place in all four of his events against the Red Hawks, also worthy of his Horizon League Swimmer of the Week for the men. <coughs> Excuse me. So with that, that is going to wrap up your Oakland sports update. Plenty to go through, and we went through all of it. We went through women's soccer. We went through men's soccer, volleyball, esports, and swim and dive. All the sports going on. Currently, I know I'm kind of missing out on the golf aspect as well. Forgive me for that. But there comes, there comes a time where you know we got to make some business decisions for radio in terms of timing, of course. And that's going to wrap up your Oakland sports update. Before we go to break, let me talk to you about Friday Night Groove. Fridays at 8 p.m. Listen to Friday Night Groove right here on WXOU, hosted by DJ RBJ since 2011. Friday Night Groove is your home for some of the best soul, jazz, electronic, indie, and alternative music here at this station. He also does interviews with artists and has has one of the best voices in the radio game. I'm telling you, when you hear him transitioning songs, 
saying you're listening to Friday Night Groove. Oh, he gets into it. It's awesome. So tune in Fridays at 8 on WXOU. We'll be right back for more Jomo Show. Welcome back here to the Jomo Show, 88.3 FM WXOU. I'm Giovanni Moshieri, your host. And we just covered, if you're tuning in right now, if you're tuning in 40 minutes late, first of all, where you've been. Second of all, we covered your club sports here at Oakland University. We went through a bunch of them. And we also just went through your NCAA sports. So if you missed all that and you want to get your Jomo Show action, YouTube and Spotify is the place for full recordings and episodes of the Jomo Show. And right now, we got the NFL to cover. We also got my live picks to get to for this upcoming week of the NFL. So we're going to be covering the Detroit Lions blowing the doors off of the Carolina Panthers. And we're going to talk about some of the shockers, some of the highlights, some of the results of Week 5 NFL football. So getting into the Lions. 42-24 42-24 was the score against the Carolina Panthers in Detroit. Panthers stay winless, and the Lions stay, and the Lions stay winning. In this game, it's, it's not a surprise that this is what happened. It's not a surprise that it was a domination game. Panthers are rebuilding. The Panthers are not a good team right now. They have a lot to work through. Rookie quarterback, not a lot threats or weapons for that quarterback defense needs a lot of upgrades the whole team needs an upgrade that happens with certain teams you know back in 2015 the Panthers won the Super Bowl you know teams go through their ups and downs and you know some longer than others but this is currently the time for the Carolina Panthers and the Lions took care of business they did what they were supposed to they were 10 point favorites and they won by more than that some would say they covered but to get to some of the highlights of this game, some of the players that really showed out, some of the players that caught my eye, some of the players that are now getting some recognition around the league nationally. Obviously, Aiden Hutchinson's interception was awesome. Hit, he one-handed it, dude. He's a defensive end. Or I guess now, since they're throwing him in the middle a lot, you could call him just straight-up defensive lineman. He has four interceptions in a season and a quarter as a defensive end. That's stuff J.J. Watt used to do. That's stuff that, like, freaks of nature do. Not even, like, like amazing DNs. You, like, monsters get interceptions like that. And sacks. And pressures. Aiden Hutchinson is top of the league right now. He's top there in pressures. He's... Getting up there in sacks. I think he's at four and a half right now. Way up there in interceptions, if you're going to be talking about that in total. But it's just incredible what his, he's been able to do. And, you know, you hear the whole transition of like, okay, when you're a rookie, yeah, you get, you, I mean, you're still learning or you're, and, you know, you're still learning the lifestyle. When you're a sophomore in the, in the league, you, you know, everything's going towards football. You're not going to class. You're not. You know, you're focused on football, so obviously there's going to be a lot of improvement, but, like, he's getting a lot of improvement. This is awesome. He is a guy that can is leader of a defense, man. Aiden Hutchinson is freaking awesome. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know already. This isn't groundbreaking news. This is just the topic of the week. David Montgomery is still an absolute monster. He fits perfectly with this team, with the, of- with the offensive line, with his style of running between the tackles. Eventually, he's going to complement very well with Jameer Gibbs. Uh, eventually. I, it's whatever. I'm not going to get into the Jameer Gibbs thing. It's, it'll happen eventually. I'm not worried. But, you know, it's, it's just Montgomery's awesome, man. The, and, and even like he, that touchdown run that he had earlier in the game, like early in the game, you know, you never see him break out for that long. Usually, you'll see him like, t- like you know, take five guys with him, you know, for like a twelve yard run. But like he like bounced out and got up on the edge, and somehow they couldn't catch him. You know, he's not the fastest guy in the world, but you know, it, you know, you got all that. You got you know the blocking concepts are right. You know, everything is just working so well for that run game in David Montgomery. The fr- like the dude's got the dude's a bowling ball. You know what I mean? He's just so much fun to watch. 
Sam Laporta is literally one of the best tight ends in the league as a rookie. And I remember when he was drafted, there was the whole debate about whether you pick Sam, Sam Laporta or you pick the guy from Notre Dame. I forget his name, but he went to Green Bay. And, okay, so if we're, if we're going to bring this up, I don't need, like this isn't really a debate, obviously, because Sam Laporta is doing fantastic. But could it be that if they pick the other guy, it would be the same production? Maybe, maybe not. I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't imagine that, or otherwise I would have picked him, you know? So I got to kind of think of it that way, but... Laporta is literally top three tight end in the league right now, and it's awesome. You got Kelsey, let's say Mark Andrews, and then it's Sam Laporta, or or for Kelsey Kittle and Laporta. Maybe he's maybe some think he's even better than Mark Andrews. At least this season he might be. But it is just awesome. And then who else is awesome? It's Josh Reynolds. He has been. He's one of the most reliable receivers. That I mean. Yeah, he's one of the most reliable uh, reliable receivers on the team. I was going to say the league, I, and I'm not. I haven't studied enough to make that determination. But Josh Reynolds is good. He's consistent. He knows who he's going to be, or he's going to be where he says he's going to be. And you know, he, he's just reliable, consistent. When you throw it to him, you're not worried. And that gets kind of into the Jameson Williams topic. Obviously, he had a really he had a really bad drop early in the game on a crossing route. Some say he was afraid to get hit. I am not making that statement. I don't know for sure, but it was a bad drop right through the hands. It's not a good look. He made up for it with a block that led to that Montgomery touchdown. Yes, let's say it can't. Let's say it cancels even. But let's say it breaks even, clean slate. But either way, it's not. You know, it's not. Uh, sunshine and rainbows for Jamison Williams, his situation, how he's developing, what the, you know, how he's being used, how much is being used, how much is going to be used. You know what I mean? It's not looking the greatest for that first round pick that you traded up to get. There's still time, but he's kind of behind the eight ball here. He, you know, red shirt for injury. That's fine. Suspended for six games. Weird situation, but still kind of dumb. You're still not there for the team. You come back and you're dropping stuff. It's, I mean, it's not an attack on him personally. And I don't like to do that personally with, with athletes. I'm trying to watch my mouth when it comes to talk about specific athletes. But when you take the evidence of what we've seen before, it doesn't look good. And it's something that we expected it to look better. Can we agree with that? I think that's an agreeable thing to say. And you wish it would be a little bit cleaner. You wish it would have a lot more production. And you wish you saw some of that potential. It It's there, but... Man, it. I hope he gets going fast. Because he's going to have to get this done in a hurry or else things are going to get loud about Jameson Williams. He's still got a shot, but he's, he's got to... I think he's got to hustle for this one. I think he's got to you know, put some real emphasis on this. So... With that being said, let's get to the rest of the NFL, shall we? Let's get to the scoreboard. So, Thursday Night Football was the Bears and the Commanders. What what happened in that game? I was out with my friends, and I kind of saw this on the TV as we were walking by. And I'm like, the Bears scored how many? I look at my fantasy. I left DJ Moore on the bench. DJ Moore in my league, at least a PPR league, and, and I forget how the points are calculated, but he had eight receptions. He had 230 yards. He had three touchdowns. He had 53 points in my league. I left him on the bench. I had him. And Cole Komet. So, th- this Bears offense went nuclear on the commanders. I don't know what's going on. That was such a shock to me. That was such a blindside they just dropped the bomb on the commanders it was amazing 40 to 20 wow sunday morning was the jags and the bills jaguars in you know they were in their second week in london and the bills were visiting and showed up late you know i think they were there friday they flew in friday for the sunday game and i'm not saying that's a good or bad thing i heard some study or some Statistics saying that the team that arrives latest 
to an international game wins, usually. So it's a whole mess to figure out, but the NFL was trying to figure out whether having a team in London is going to be such an advantage for the visit or over the visiting team. So they were trying to figure that out. The game kind of looked like that there is much of an advantage for being adjusted to the time zone compared to a team that is not. The Bills that scored like 37 in the in their previous 3 games in a row scored 20. And then it came out the game they came out the gate sluggish. And it, it was 11 to it was 11 to 7 up until the third quarter or or up going into the fourth quarter. That's where the fireworks started, but weird game. Jaguars win 25-20. Texans and Falcons. CJ Stroud he's been having a good season. That's I mean, he has been. You can't knock that. The Falcons, however, they showed up today. Desmond Ritter threw for three for three twenty nine and a touchdown after the Lions kind of dethroned him in week three. You know, now it's now he's had a bit of a bounce back game. And the Falcons won at 21 19. Lions and Panthers, we talked about that. Titans and Colts. I never know what to do with the with the AFC South. How to predict it? Who's gonna win? I I never have any idea. Colts were awesome in this game. Zach Moss, twenty three carries, one sixty five and two touchdowns. They beat the Titans twenty three sixteen. <laughs> Dolphins and Giants. <laughs> Giants are not good. Giants. A really, really, really not good. One and four in the season. They are beaten handily by the Dolphins, thirty-one to sixteen. Tyree Kill, eight receptions, one hundred and eighty-one yards, and a touchdown. Devon A. Chan, I forget how to pronounce it. Eleven carries, one fifty-one touchdown. Tua, three hundred eight, two touchdowns, two interceptions. It's there. One was a hundred and two yard pick six. You know. That's the only touchdown the Giants had that day, but, you know, they, it happened. Uh, speaking of a beatdown, Saints and Patriots. Saints shut out the Patriots and then also leave 34 points at their door in a paper bag and light it on fire, if you want to put it that way. So they, 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 came, they came to their place. They dropped 34 on the on the... In the living room floor and left. Didn't let them have any. 34-0. Saints win. Patriots look bad. Patriots, Giants, Panthers. You could say Bears, but Bears are on the come up. But like some stinkers in the league. Ravens and Steelers. The AFC North throwdown was a weird one. Steelers ended up winning at 17-10. to George Pickens had a fantastic game. Six receptions, 130 yards, a touchdown. Lamar Jackson, 236 and an interception, unfortunately. But the Fire Matt Canada chants in Pittsburgh are happening, and they're loud. And it looks like they're going to be continuing if the score is going to be 17-10. to 10. I don't, Defense can only do so much. But in the AFC North, the game's kind of come down to that. Steelers win 17-10. Eagles Rams. I really thought the Rams were able were going to be able to get this one. Eagles they stay undefeated. Twenty three fourteen is the final score. Jalen Hurts three hundred three an interception and a touchdown. He also ru- he also rushed fifteen carries seventy two yards and a touchdown. AJ Brown got six for one twenty seven. And the Eagles, although they aren't up to the standard as we had them, you know, with their Super Bowl run last year, they're still undefeated. Their offense is still good. They're still scoring. And the brotherly shove is still unstoppable. Team's getting better at it, according to uh, center Jason Kelsey on his podcast. But 5-0 and speaks for itself. Bengals and Cardinals. I thought the, Bang- I thought the Cardinals were going to get this one. But Joe Burrow, he comes back. You know, Jamar Chase, he's definitely back. And the Bengals seem to be steering the ship. Joe Burrow had 317 for three touchdowns and a pick. And then uh, Jamar Chase... Always bleeping open. 15 receptions, 192 yards, three touchdowns. He made up for 
the games that he didn't, you know, they lacked in. So coming up on a few minutes here, let's kind of fly through this. Jets and Broncos. Broncos look bad too. The Jets beat them 31 to 21. Um Brees Hall, 22 carries, 177 yards, uh, and a touchdown as well. But the Broncos, they need help. It's code red. Some say they're going to be sellers of the trade deadline. And it's looking like nothing has improved since Sean Payton's got there. They got time to improve, but like you're kind of you're kind of treading water here. We'll put it that way. Chiefs and Vikings. Chiefs win at 27-20. I have been told that there is some weird penalty action into this game. You know, some would say the Chiefs got bailed out again by the referees after they struggled to beat the Jets and then struggled to beat the, the Vikings. I've been told that the refs haven't been have been involved in it. That's just what I've been reading. Pacheco, 16 carries, 55 yards, touchdown. Kirk Cousins, 284, two touchdowns. He's doing all he can. We love Kirk Cousins, but we also love the 1-4 record in the division. But, you know, it, the team is just 13-4 and four last year, man. It's not like this is a hard fall. And speaking of hard fall, we get to Sunday night, 49ers, Cowboys, 49ers, boat race them, 42-10. to 10. And separate themselves plenty from the Cowboys. Cowboys falling in a bunch of rankings, especially in the, in the NFC. Still can't get over the hump of the 49ers, whether you're looking at the past two playoffs, whether you're looking at the regular season. Cowboys have struggled. They're still a pretty decent team. There's Cowboys are still a pretty good team, but inconsistency is, what's, is what usually gets them. And 49ers just keep working. Brock Purdy, okay, he's kind of good. Brock Purdy's kind of good. It is a fantastic system. I know that the whole debate about whether Brock, Brock Purdy is good or not has some hilarious wrinkles and takes involved in it. You know, some would say, you know, I heard some people doing the game of like, could this quarterback do what Brock Purdy's doing? And they went to Garoppolo, they went to Kirk Cousins, they went to Mahomes and Hurts and Allen and. They ended up finding like 20 quarterbacks that were able to do what that they thought were able to do what Brock Purdy's doing, but he's good. He's good in that system, and so far that's the only system he's playing in, so that just means he's good with what he's got. What he's got is a lot. Kittle had three touchdowns, too. That was crazy. So 49ers are super, super good, and cream of the crop, 5-0 and oh, along with the Eagles. And then Monday night, a stinker. Packers and Raiders. <laughs> Raiders win it 17 to 13. Happy is is uh, the Jomo show here. Packers are now two and three, and that's an even farther gap between them and us, us being the Lions in the division. And you know, both these teams are still not good. <laughs> both these teams are not the best. And for Monday night football, it was it was gross. It was definitely gross. So that is your NFL scoreboard. In the last three minutes of the Jomo Show, I am going to give you my live picks for this upcoming week. We got 15 games to pick. Tonight is Denver at Kansas City. (laughs) It's got to be Kansas City. Come on. We're picking straight up here. Baltimore is at Tennessee. The, The AFC teams are gross. I'm not sure. It's weird. Baltimore's coming off a loss. Both, but the Titans are too. I'm just gonna take the home team in the. I'm just gonna take the home team in this one. Uh, it, it's both teams are just weird. They're just weird. Carolina's at Miami. You got to give it to the Dolphins. Indianapolis is at Jacksonville. Those games are always weird and tough. Divisional game. This one's in Jacksonville. I'm gonna say. I'm going to go with the home team. I think Jacksonville, they're coming off a nice win against the Bills in London. Coming back home from that two-week stay. Oh, you know what? I'm kind of going back and forth on this, actually. I'm going to take Indianapolis on the road in this one. Garner Minshew is going to be the quarterback because Anthony Richardson is on IR, and we're running out of time, so i got to move on. I'm taking the Colts. Minnesota at Chicago. Ooh, this one's gross, too. 
I'm going to go with the Bears because uh, Justin Jefferson is now on IR himself. New Orleans at Houston. Houston's been pretty good. I mean, they're coming off a they're coming off a loss to the Falcons, and now they have New Orleans coming to town. Gut feeling says New Orleans rides the momentum from the Patriots win. San Francisco at Cleveland. I mean, like, do you think? Do you think the Browns defense could stop the 49ers offense? You think that's what their their stop is? Cleveland's Cleveland's coming off a bye week. I, I'm pretty sure they are, and if they're not, I'm wrong. I'm going to I'm going to say San Francisco. You can't bet. I mean, you can't willingly bet against them. Seattle and Cincinnati. Cincinnati coming off a huge win. Although I would take Seattle on the road, and I'm taking a lot of road teams right now. Washington at Atlanta. I'm going to go with Atlanta. I think they're a more consistent team, and Washington's coming off an embarrassment. New England at Las Vegas. I'm going to take the Raiders. Um, Patriots stink. Arizona at the Rams. I got the Rams. I think the Rams are just a better team. Detroit at Tampa Bay. I'm going Detroit, of course. Philadelphia at the Jets. I kind of, you know, the Jets have been playing pretty good. I'm going to say the Jets knocked them off. I'm I'm confident in the Jets. I've been betting. I've been uh, p- picking them often. Giants at Buffalo. Come on, that's Buffalo. And then Dallas at the Chargers. I like the Chargers in this one. And for total points for Chargers at Dallas, I'm going to say this one goes to 50. I'm going to say this is a high scoring, and eh, we'll say 55, just to put a number down. And that is the Joe Mo Show picks. Clicked, signed, sealed, delivered. We're going to see what happens. Uh, so far, I'm second place in the league. I'm tied for second. I got 52 games picked correctly. The person above me is 54, so I'm only a couple games behind. We're rolling here for the Joe Mo Show picks. I'm doing good. We're doing good here. So that's going to wrap up the show here. I'm a little bit over time. But thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Joe Mo Show. Giovanni Mosheri, Sports Media Director at WXOU, signing off and saying we'll see you next week. Go Golden Grizzlies. Go Lions. And go.